Welcome to Ahkam SOS Season 3, the show that discusses the duties and practices of Muslims in accordance to the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. Joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Salaamu Alaikum Sheikhna. Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Sheikhna, how was your Ramadan? Did you have a good Ramadan? Was it blessed? All fine, great Ramadan. MashaAllah. And I hope you two at home had a very good Ramadan, a blessed Ramadan. And you did join us for Season 2 where we discussed the whole of the ahkam in regards to Ramadan and fasting, mashallah. Sheikhna, glad to have you on the show again. Thank you very much. Last time we were discussing conditions of salah, we discussed uh, you know, uh, conditions of direction, we discussed tahara. Let's th move the conversation on towards where we can pray in terms of locality, locations, and the area that we pray in. Does Sayyid Sadiq actually discuss this? Does Islam discuss where a Muslim can pray and cannot pray? Insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi al-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma sallallahu Well, as you know, uh, salah and praying is one of the uh, main um, subjects in uh, the Islamic uh, teachings and rules. And the one who submits to Islam, uh, the one who becomes either baligh in the age of puberty and uh, um, adolescence or reverts to Islam and becomes Muslim, they must um, perform this daily prayer um, in three sessions, as we explained uh, previously. Now, this type of ibadah and worship, as if we've mentioned in the previous episodes, that there are conditions. You can't just go to the, uh, the place of prayer and you begin your salah without any conditions. If we look at everything in this world, there are conditions um, to use certain products or to enter into places, there are conditions. So with regard to salah as well, there are conditions that we have to follow and abide with. And of course, they are um, conditions of, of, of divinely um, subjected and uh, approved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let's begin with um, the place of the prayer person, the one who offers prayer and performs prayer every day. This person requires to follow certain conditions and criteria. For the salah, we have uh, some criteria with regard to the place in which the person prays. So we begin with the first criteria, and that is the place in which we pray, we must make sure it is mubah. In other words, it is permissible and allowed. In other words, it shouldn't be usurped in any how, because the usurped uh, locations and places, or ghasub in Arabic, they will void the prayer. They will make the prayers batal. Oh, wow. So what you're saying is that if I go to a place where, which is usurped, uh, if I pray on that location, if I pray there, my salah is void, it's batal. Exactly. One of the conditions of the acceptance of the prayer by Allah Taala, that the location you pray, either you have the permission from the owners to pray in, okay. or it's yours. You own it. Okay. Allah does not want a worship in which there is some kind of oppression against the others. Because you're actually usurping and taking a location of somebody else's place. So, somewhere where I have asked permission, and I, have, I have ijazah. Exactly. I have permission. Exactly. Not that, for example, um, I don't know, if I'm at some sort of market or a shopping center, or let's say I'm in a shop. I decide I want to pray salah. I go to the changing room and I pray salah in the changing room, in, my, in the little private cubicle. That without the permission of the store owner, that is usurped. That, as I've mentioned, as you mentioned, that with the permission and the consent of the uh, of the owners, you can pray. That's fine. I mean, public places, 
a way you can pray as well. In okay. the parks, in the streets, yes. in the corners it's of the streets. The whole of the public, that, yes. That's fine, but in such places, let's say in, inside a, a supermarket or a shop, now this location belongs to the owners of this place. Now you, you may need some kind of a permission, consent, consent to be able to pray uh, in that place because these are private owned locations. Um, otherwise, if it's a place where known to be a public place, then you can pray. Take a corner, in, in, let's say, uh, in a corner of um, a park or a street, somewhere clean, somewhere away from the crowds, then you can pray, that's fine. So, Sheikh, is there any situation where if I pray on a usurped land, my salah is valid, that it is accepted is sahih? Well, there are two scenarios with this regard. Um, number one, if somebody never knew about that this place was usurped and was ghasub, okay. and he comes and prays, and that happens sometimes if you go to certain countries, um, let's say you go to a hotel, you book a hotel, and you would find out later that this hotel was usurped. Okay. Let's say it, be it belongs to some inheritors. That one of the inheritors took over the wealth of his father, and ignored and you know pushed away the others. For example, so that's usurped in somehow, or the government took this land from the owners, you know, the, the actual owners. So in this case, because I never knew about uh, that this place was usurped, and I, you know, I stayed there, I prayed there for many days. In this uh, case and scenario, that's fine. The salah will be valid and accepted. Also, if the one has forgotten totally about mm -hmm. uh, the place in which he went to, to pray, for example. Let's say he goes back in, the, the re in two or three years' time to pray in the same place, same hotel, mm -hmm. to stay there. He just forgot. Again, in this scenario, if somebody forgets that the place was usurped, then his salah will be accepted as well and valid. Sheikh, what if the, the place is usurped, but um, you ask the person in charge, can I pray here? And he, say, he or she says, yes, you can. But he or she is the usurper. So you've asked permission. For example, um, I mean, I don't want to get political, but let's say we go to uh, an area in Palestine, which is, let's say, illegally occupied. Who, uh, can I pray there? Do I have to ask? The original owners, or do I ask the new owners? But that land is usurped. So who, where would I go? Who would I ask? You see, the rule is if you know that this land is usurped, you're not allowed to pray in it. Oh, that's so the rule. It's, but you should stay away. You're not allowed. Exactly. If you don't know, that's fine. Okay. Then it becomes mubah. Everything is halal. Everything is mubah, unless uh, you become certain that this place uh, is usurped, you're not allowed to pray in, uh, there's no permission, for example. But otherwise, as I said, in the parks, in public place, which there is no um, actual owners, you know, par private owners, then you can just pray in the streets and in the parks. Ahsan, Sheikh, Ahsan. Yeah. I think it's really important to, to mention to the viewers that there's two types of usurping. One is when you usurp by not asking permission, praying on the land, you are usurping, you, you are doing ghasp. And the other is when someone else has done ghasp on the land and you're about to pray on it and you know. So th it works both ways. Sometimes you're doing it and sometimes it's someone else. Correct? Exa exactly. And you have to make sure you refrain from both. Uh, or at least you tell the others who, are, who don't really know about uh, this mas'ala and, 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 and situation that they have to avoid it. But as I've said, even if they prayed and they never knew about it, that's fine. That's Allah's cor correct and, and valid. But they have to make sure if they knew about it, to avoid it for the future. Um, acts of, of, of salah or any other ibadah as well. Ahsan, Sheikh. Sheikh, what about in, in, in the mosque? In, in the masjid, when we're at the mosque, sometimes people, they reserve a place for them to, to go pray. For example, I've seen it many times. The turba is there and there's someone's wallet, someone's mobile, someone's belt on the floor. As in someone's sitting there, someone's taking this spot. Maybe he's going to do wudu or going to grab a, a tasli or something like that or Quran. Am I allowed to sit in that position and pray there uh, or not? Well, if somebody sits in that position, usually, so 
the person who prays, let's say, in that spot. It's his spot of prayer every day in the jama'ah. And I've seen this many times back home um, in the Muslim countries that there are some elderly people who come every day, every dhuhr and, and maghrib prayer, and that's their spot. And they have their own uh, prayer mat, for example, the before the adhan, before the salah. In this case, um, that spot and location becomes for, for them. And we're not allowed to uh, take over, and that becomes ghasub and usurped. So we have to make sure that if we want, we want to pray in, that, in their place, we take permission from them. Otherwise, uh, it becomes ghasub, and as the Sayyid says, as a uh, obligatory precaution, it becomes, uh, the salat doesn't become uh, accepted and valid. Okay, so are we talking about once that person has put his prayer mat there and um, he's going to pray there, or are we talking in general that every day this person, without fail, prays in this position? So, um, am I, so it's time for Doha. Normally, um, Sheikh Ibn Halal sits here. Uh, he's not here. I've, I've taken his position before he got there. Should I, um, you know, um, let go of that position for the for the uh, for the sheikh because he's usually there. That's usually his spot. Have I usurped his position, or are you saying that no? When he puts his rug down and he puts his thing there, and then I come, I have then that's when you're usurping. Well, the Sayyid says clearly that if somebody usually prays in that spot, we have to avoid uh, praying in that spot um, unless he get he gives us the permission. Okay. Or we shouldn't pray there at so all. So you could say that it's mushur, it's, it's quite well known that this person exactly, prays in this exactly, position, exactly. that's normally his, his spot, um, and you should ask his permission if it's okay. Although he doesn't own that land yes, or that yes, mosque. Exactly. But because he prays usually in that place, in that spot, then we can't really uh, take uh -huh. over his place and pray because it's, well, in the, the very first line of the musalli yes. and jama'ah to get the reward. But yes. you're committing sin. <laughs> and instead yes, of yes, getting yes, the reward yes. by I usurping mean, the place, I think also we see in Karbala and Najaf, mashallah, that when the, you know the, the ulama, the highly respected, high-ranking ulama, when they pray jama'ah, the first line usually you will see it's the representatives or it's the other ayatollah or the family. They stand in the first row. It's quite common, and I guess if you were to go and try and get into the front row and take one of their spaces, it would be quite rude, would it not? And, exactly, and, exactly. And in this case, exactly. your salah would be also. I mean, good. morally. It's not really accepted. Um, I mean, people really don't like for others to take their place. Let's say you have your own seat. Yes. You reserved a seat, for example, let's say an airplane or a bus or a train, yes. and somebody else sits in your place. So it's morally not accepted at all. Yes. Asan Sheikh. Sheikh, are there any other situations or conditions where you know, the land is considered to be usurped and you're not allowed to pray on? Well, there is another condition with regard to um, if somebody uh, buys a property now that property that he buys it wasn't with the money in which he paid the khumus or zakat with oh, that's a big okay. issue to be honest um, okay. that we have to pay attention to and that is when we it's not just to go to hajj yes. you take 20% of your uh, money of the hajj you know the um, uh, the money you have collected for, let's say, a year or two years, and now you want to go to Hajj, you take off 20% mm -hmm. and khumus of that money. So you would go in a Hajj, acceptable Hajj, and your money is pure. Even the property you buy, you, you have to make sure that um, that property is also bought with a pure money as well. Halal money, yes. Correct. With the halal money. And that is by making uh, the payments of khumus and zakat uh, with regard to this uh, property. So that's important as well. Again, the Sayyid says, um, without pa paying the khumus and zakat for this property, then uh, the salah would not be accepted uh, as an obligatory precaution. So again, ihtiyat wujubi, the salah won't be accepted. In other words, you have to uh, pray again the salah outside this property or, or outside the, the, the place you've usurped, which was, uh, belongs to others. Thank you. And just a little quick note to the to the viewers that inshallah in the future coming seasons we will be discussing zakat and khums so don't worry we'll, we'll, we'll explain how to pay that correctly. Sheikh are there any other conditions in regards to 
maqam al musalli I mean, the position and the location of where to pray. So now we've discussed um, the validity and the permissibility of, of uh, the maqam of the musalli in which to be permissible yes. and not to be usurped. The second condition is that to be stationary. So in other words, um, the one who wants to pray must make sure the place that he prays is stable. So it doesn't oh. shake, so it doesn't move from one side to another. Now, the Sayyid says that if somebody is compelled to pray uh, and perform the salah in moving places, yes. or in, uh, such as the trains, the airplanes, I, I think a ship. the bus, the ship, you yeah. know, the, the boat sometimes, yeah. Those who go for fishing, for example. Now, the Sayyid says that um, to perform salah in such place which lacks um, stability, st stability and being stationary, being stationary. to be stationary, yeah. then um, you cannot pray in that place. It's mandatory not to, pr to pray in that place. So you wait, you reach your destination after a few hours, and there's time for uh, the, the salah. Then you uh, pray in the destination. Okay. Um, otherwise, if there's no time, um, basically, if you reach your destination, then the, the sun will be set. Then in this case, you pray in the, in the airplane, let's say, or, or the boat, or the ship, or um, the bus, or in train, and so forth. And you try to um, keep and respect all the conditions of, of the salah, the stability, the qibla, for example, yes. Uh, you try about to, you know, to, to let's say wait for a few seconds when um, there's stability, for example. Sometimes ah, the train so shakes. So yeah, turbulence. Exactly. Uh, on the train or on the So you give it a few seconds, ship, you, yeah. you keep quiet, and then when things continue, went uh, normal, then you continue the salah. Excellent. Is there any other criteria in regards to uh, the, the position, location of a praying? Yes, the third criteria is to be uh, in a able to complete the salah and the prayer uh, in that place. Okay. Now, in other words, if there are conditions in which you cannot continue praying, so let's say one scenario, many people who go to Hajj, they would face this. Um, when you go to the holy mosques in Medina and Mecca, let's say you enter the mosque in the time in which uh, the other groups they have finished their jama'ah prayer and they are just leaving the haram and you're praying in the middle of the uh, of okay, the courtyard the you're of, you're of, in the way. Yeah, exactly okay. of the haram of al makki or the nabawi and you pray the and thousands are leaving the mosque in this situation if you know that if you pray you might you might be pushed mm. kicked or even uh, been taken away from your place let's say a few yards away in this case, you're not allowed to pray. Oh, okay. So you try to find a stable place, a quiet place, and you perform the prayers. So that's important, that we find a place in which even sometimes rain, you know, um, if it's raining and it's actually causing some kind of discomfort. Uh, discomfort, exactly, then you have to pray somewhere that is more comfortable, where you can do sujood, for example, yes. um, and so forth. So the place is important. You choose a place, a quiet place, a stable place. There's no crowds, for example. And then you can perform your prayer safely. Hassan, Hassan. That's all we've got time for, Sheikh Ma. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Inshallah, with the next episode, we will continue with the conditions. Inshallah, I'd like to thank you and thank all of you for joining us. And join us on the next episode of Hikam SOS as we continue going through the criteria, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, ah, ah.